want to give an honor to God and to the leadership of this great church, to the deacons, the officers, the mothers, and to take the make of this great branch of Zion. To all of you, my father's children, it's just good to be here. Amen. amen. I want to thank the Lord, amen, for Minister Phillips, amen. Come on, give God some praise, amen. Something at your fingertips that can even drive 
draw a poor people to me. Come on. Come on. He's putting them in place to understand that the deacon lives in it, to understand that this task that I'm getting ready to give unto you is it, important because it's going to bring men, women, children, boys, and girls to know the one who humbly shed and died. Amen. And can I tell the truth this morning that that's what he's supposed to be doing? New hope when we come and sit amongst these four consecrated walls. We, we are supposed to be coming and trying to strategize and realize how is it I can bring those from the streets into here so that they can give God praise and give God glory. No, I can talk to them, I talk to myself. How is it that I can bring folks into God's house so that they can see God on another level? We've gotten so complacent and comfortable in church that, that we've forgotten what God has called and commissioned and commanded us to do. We, we've gotten so caught up in our titles and accolades and, and what we do on first Sunday and, and second Sunday and third Sunday that, that we fail to realize that God has called us for a time such as this to tell a dying world that Jesus is Lord. What song the choir is supposed to sing and not sing? Who's going to usher and stand on the door? And who's going to be in control at the meet? But the reality of it is God called all of us to be disciples of Jesus Christ. Y'all stay with me here. Uh -huh. And the problem with the 
church is, we're too much in a place now where instead of being proactive, we're being reactive. Amen. No, let talk to the end. Instead of us acting before it happens, mm -hmm. yeah. we want to talk about it after it happens. Yeah. We want to have meetings about it after it happens. We, we want to talk about what we could have done after it happens. The word proactive means, my brother and sister, is to serve and to prepare for. In a meeting, control and expected occurrence or situation, especially in negative. Reactive means of concern with or having a reaction. Which means, brothers and sisters, that the issue and the problem with the church is, and the reason that the world is growing and the church ain't growing, is because the world has learned how to be proactive and not reactive. It ain't by coincidence that we got a Dollar General in every corner that can't be. It ain't by coincidence that Walmart has, has adopted this self check out and have got rid of people because they understood that the world is moving toward the technology standpoint. And in order for them to keep up with the world, they got to move the same way. Amen. And here we are set up in the church still doing the same thing Amen. we were doing in 1923, trying to figure out why everything and everybody is growing. Church Sunday after Sunday. Comfortable as we can be. 
trying to figure out what happened to the church. Yeah. We start running back down memory lane, talking about when grandma was here. Mm -hmm. What the old deacons used to do. Mm -hmm. What the old saints used to do. Come on, Gary. It was good for them in that day. Right. But I'm reminded from the song that the old saints used to sing that says, To serve this present age, my calling to fulfill, when it lets me know that at some time you got to get to where the present age is and to serve the way that God would have us to serve. Right. I know it's time for this right if you be honest with yourself. I know it hurt a little bit, but it's the truth. We've got to do what God. We talk about and preach about certain things from a pulpit standpoint. But are we really doing what God has called us to do? Can you be honest with yourself this morning? And ask yourself, are you doing your part of move God's house to the next place? Mm -hmm. And I ask you this morning, those of you leaders that are in places, God calls you home tonight, but the next generation will be able to take you home and yeah. continue to keep it alive. No. Have you invested in them enough All right. no. that if God came and got our leaders tonight, that the younger generation will be able to pick it up you and keep it right. Have you taught them how to love enough? Have, have you taught them how to embrace that? Yeah. Have you taught them how to, to tell a dying world that Jesus is more than Have you put on the inside of them enough stuff that when it was that if the doors began to come closed, that the young people in New Hope Missionary Baptist Church would be able to keep the doors open for the next generation? Yeah. Mm. Hey, Listen, it's all right. Be God has called us to be. We've allowed ourselves between the four walls to close off the world that's around us. It's hard to be in church when the school up the street don't know that you exist. Amen. It's hard to be in church when the daycare down the street don't know that you can exist. It's hard to be in church when neighborhoods ain't your back doors and nobody's ever been over to the neighborhood and knocked on the door to let them know there's a new Hope Missionary Baptist Church right across the street who would love to see you on Sunday morning. Amen. It's hard to be in church when you're driving down the 41 and you see folks standing on the roadside who are hungry that are begging to Please eat. You keep down down. Down and won't even give them food to eat. It. It's hard to be in church. Amen. We've locked ourselves in these four walls and become complacent and okay with just doing good at church. Amen. Showing up on Sunday morning with our three piece suits, our tie, with our pillows, our skirt, and our hat, laying down and fried to the side while the world around us is falling and dying by the waist. Can I ask the question this morning? What do we do? Is the church?
you sit in the middle of the service, mm -hmm. somebody just lost their baby. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody's son has been killed in a drive-by shooting. Mm -hmm. Somebody's son has been killed on overdose with on drugs. Yeah. Somebody's son has been killed down in the streets like a dog. Somebody's child has been lost. Somebody's daughter is standing on the street corner right now selling herself. Somebody's daughter is mixed up with a joker somewhere right now tied up. That's going up to her dead daddy. Somebody's daughter is somewhere right now giving up herself to feed her children. What good? Because we've claimed to be a Christian for so long. Mm -hmm. That the world has 
Bible says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. Philippians 4 and 13 says that I can all things through Christ that strengthens me. All that sounds good, but are you able and really able to, to put one foot in front of the other and be who God has called you to be? See, God is sick of folks talking about who they're going to be. He wants to know that's some folks that can really do and be who God has called us to be. Can you feed the sick? Can you feed the hungry? Can you clothe the naked? Can you love those that don't love? Go! 
that has been called upon them. He's telling them to go and be who God has called them to be. And can we keep it real up in here this morning? The reason the church is not growing is because we're not going. You wait on them to come in here. Mm-hmm. Why they waiting on you? Come on. You wait on them just fall out the sky and fill up the church. <laughs> Can I help you this morning? Yeah. I've been living 34 years of my life. I've been around church all my life. And I ain't never seen folks just fall out the sky. <laughs> They come by way of some praying and some caring and some loving. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I want to embrace some folks that don't look like church, yeah. that don't smell like church, that don't sound like church. Uh-huh. But you still got to get up, you got to get off your stool of do nothing and get out there and bring them back into the house. Yeah. Can I come down your street for a minute? Come on. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Yeah. All of us had somebody we could have called this morning yeah. uh-huh. and invited them. How many of y'all call somebody this morning and invite them to church? Man. <laughs> Try to Man like. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do you one here. I'm going to do you one here. How many of y'all call somebody yesterday? And invited them to church today. Okay, I, I got three hands now. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I got four hands. Okay. I'm, I'm going to do you one better. I'm going to help you out a little bit more. How many of y'all called somebody and told somebody this week that they ought to come to church with you this Sunday? Amen. Amen. And we wonder why the church. Yourself. Mm-hmm. You was taught how to uh, take a cup, put up your mouth, and drink. Mm-hmm. 
You must talk how to say yes or no. You must talk how to speak correct English. You must talk how to sit down with your shoulders square, sit straight up. You must talk that when you shake hands, you look somebody square now. We have been taught all these things. But we fail to teach them the ways of Jesus. And the reality of it is, this morning, it ain't the young people's fault that they're falling by the wayside. It's our fault that these young people are falling by the wayside because we ain't taught them how to love on another level. You want to know why the children are acting the fool and running the streets and, and killing each other? Because nobody has taught them the proper way to love one another. Uh -huh. yeah.
time out for sure what I'm saying. have a right back to the tree of life. 